My car is very small, which means that there's not a lot of places to put things, like beverages, for example. There are two cup holders between the driver's seat and the passenger seat, which is great if each of those people has exactly one beverage. But what if one of them has a coffee and a water? Well, there's this circular cutout next to the cigarette lighter, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be for an ashtray. It wouldn't hold a coffee cup very securely anyway. There are these vaguely cup-shaped cutouts in the door bins. I don't know about you, but I use those bins for trash, so I don't really want to store a coffee cup in there. There is this bin behind the two center cup holders, which works as a cup holder in a pinch. It's very awkward to access for the driver, but it could work as the second cup holder for the passenger. So that's three usable cup holders, but it would be so great to have four. That way the driver and the passenger could each have two beverages. There's also this empty space between the cup holders and the shifter, and it's the perfect size for a fourth cup holder, but there is nothing there. Sounds like the perfect opportunity for a 3D printed solution. The space where I wanna put my new cup holder has some complex curves, which are really difficult to measure. So I just made a paper template that exactly fits this space, and then I can just take this template, take a scaled photo, and then import that into Fusion 360 as a canvas. But we do still need a few measurements off of this area. One of those is the total width, which looks to be just over six inches. And I also need to mark on this template the safe zone for my cup holder. Obviously there's the emergency brake right here, so I don't wanna block access to this. With the cup here, I can still reach the emergency brake. And so I'll just mark the safe zone on my template. I probably wanna stay out of this area. And then I can grab some dimensions off of my existing cup holders. Both of these are large enough for a big stainless steel travel mug. Probably wanna make this on the smaller size just to leave enough space to grab the parking brake. So I'll grab the diameter of this cup holder three and a quarter inches. How deep do we wanna make that? Just about three inches. And I think those dimensions plus our template are enough to get started modeling in Fusion 360. I took a photo of my canvas and I'm gonna start by inserting that as a canvas into Fusion 360. So I'll go to insert canvas and I'm gonna rotate it so that it's parallel to the grid lines. So I think minus one degree should get us pretty close. And now I'll go to my canvas in the browser, right click, calibrate, I taped this template to my cutting mat, which makes it really easy to calibrate. Each of these marks is one centimeter, so I'm going to choose two marks that are pretty far apart. We don't wanna to go too far apart or else we'll start getting some parallax error. So that is 21 centimeters. Hit enter, and there we go. Now just to double check, I'll create a new sketch. 8.26 inches, 8.269 times 2.54. 21 centimeters on the dot, so that is perfect. I also took this photo from straight overhead, which minimizes the perspective error, so this should be a very accurate canvas. Now I'm going to trace these curves. I'll create a spline. So there's one curve. There is the second. And the width of this has to be six and a quarter inches. So I'm going to draw a construction line from end to end. 6.16, and it needs to be a little longer. So from the midpoint, draw a line to the left, which is 6.25 divided by two. And then from that point, we can draw another line that is 6.25. And now we have a symmetrical shape of the proper width. Close off our shape. We can make a new parameter called layer height, change the unit to millimeters, and we're gonna print at 0.2 millimeters. And now we can make Another parameter called material thickness. This can be a multiplier of layer height. Let's do maybe 10 layer heights. About 0 0.08 inches, and that should be plenty thick. Extrude those by material thickness. Perfect. We can turn off our canvas, and I want this to sort of hug that center console. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the side over here. I'll project this whole profile, and I think it should come down about half of an inch. We can draw a rectangle to here and then extrude this outwards by material thickness. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Perfect. I'll create a new sketch on top of here and we'll start making the cup holder itself. If I turn my canvas back on and turn my body off, we can see that line that I drew that's sort of the no-go zone to stay out of the way of the e-brake. So I'm going to draw a line right over there and turn my canvas off. Now, if I draw a line across there, 
we can make our cup holder kind of at the midpoint of that line. And this will be cup holder diameter. I'm just going to extrude this circle into a cylinder to get a visual representation of our cup. We said our cup holder height was three and a quarter inches. So I'll make this a new body. I'll create another sketch on top of our base and we can project our cup. Now we wanna offset this outwards to create the ring and we can't go past this orange line here. So 0 0.309 inches. In its simplest form, this is just going to be a solid ring that goes around the cup. But as is, that's not a very functional cup holder. And one thing we do have to do is move this whole shape upwards to get out of the way of that center console curving up. So I think if we move this up by half of an inch, that should be enough room. And then we'll need to close off the bottom of this. We can extrude this downwards by material thickness. And now we can use loft to create a transition between these two shapes. The first shape will be this bottom circle and we're going to loft this to this. That also gives us a really nice fillet which will add some strength to the bottom. I wanna create a cushion that will hold the cup in the cup holder. So I'm going to create a construction plane down from the top. I think lowering this by a quarter of an inch and I can create a new sketch on this plane. I'll draw a construction line to here and then out to the side by half of an inch. And from this point, we can create a rectangle. We'll extrude this downwards by our minus material thickness. I wanna fill up these front two edges, 0.2 inches. And then if we turn off this body, I wanna extend this so it goes all the way into our cup holder. We'll do a combine. Target body will be our cup holder. Tool body will be our flap. Keep tool. And now we have a cutout in our cup holder. If I turn this off, you can see it. And then we can create a new sketch on here, project our ring, and then just extrude away this extra bit. Perfect. Now I'll go and create a circular pattern, bodies being these, axis being the center, and I think three of these will be perfect. And I wanna make this slot a little shorter so that it's not poking out the back. I'll create a new sketch on top, project my ring, offset this inwards just a bit, and if I turn off my flaps, I can extrude this ring downwards. And now we've essentially closed the outsides of those slots so that they don't go all the way through. So we got our flaps. I'm gonna print these separately out of TPU, which is a rubber-like 3D printing material. I definitely wanna print this in two parts. So I'm going to do a split body command. We'll split this along our bottom piece. And now that is one piece and this is another piece. I also wanna add some fillets so that the edges of this aren't so sharp. Yeah, 0.1 will be a nice edge and do the same thing to the inner edge. Lovely. It would be nice to bulk this up a little more so that there's a little more support. I'm actually gonna go back in the timeline before the split body and then make a fillet on this inside edge. I think one inch. There we go, now we have a more gradual transition. And if we go back to present, our split body still works. This is the most interesting custom cup holder I've ever seen. I got the base piece in my slicer. I'm printing it out of PETG at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. This is going to be in a hot car, so I'm using PETG because it has that temperature resistance that PLA does not. Everything looks good. It's gonna take about two hours, 15 minutes to print. 99 cents in filament. Let's get printing. Oh, cool. Because we have the template right here, we can just lay it on top and see that it fits perfectly. I did not even plan this. That just happened like that. So I just got back from the car to double check my measurements and good thing I did because the cup holder part needs to be raised up even more to leave enough room for those sloping sides in the center console. If you remember, we raised it by half an inch. I think it needs to be raised by another inch and a quarter. But lucky for us, we're using parametric design so I can just go back in the timeline to my move command right click, edit feature, and we can move this up by another inch and a quarter. 1.25, hit enter, and everything should propagate through, although we might have to edit some features like this split body command. I'll just delete this command for now. I wonder if I go back to my loft command, I wanna make it a little more gradual on that left side. So I'm gonna to go to edit feature. Ah, it looks like I didn't include this part in my profile. So that will make everything a little more gradual. 
and I think there should still be enough room there for the e-brake. I wonder if we can pull this down anymore, or if we're gonna poke out the side. What happens if I pull this down? Okay, it looks like that's gonna be too far, but we can go up a little. We can go down by a quarter inch without poking into the side. Let's bring this into our slicer to see what it looks like. So even with only 10% infill, this is a 12 hour print. I don't love doing prints this long, so I think I'm gonna split this into two parts. That way we can check the fit of the bottom piece without wasting so much material in case there is an issue. So I split that body at the bottom of the cylinder. It does have this indentation because we pulled the inside down by a quarter of an inch, but six and a half hours is a much more reasonable print time. And it looks like we'll be able to print this with no overhangs, which is always fantastic. So let's go ahead and get that printing. Didn't get the prettiest top fill here, but that'll all be sort of hidden in the cup holder. So not the end of the world. The last pieces to print are these TPU flaps. And I wanna add a bit of clearance so that they're easier to get into the slots. So if you remember, we're printing these at 10 layer heights. So if I go to scale and scale one of these by 90%, that will make it print at nine layer heights and we'll have a bit of clearance on the sides as well. One extra, just in case. Mix up some five minute epoxy. Gotta twist this kind of like molten glass as you're moving it or else it'll drip all over the place. All right, that should be plenty of epoxy. Modeling registration pins would have made this whole process a lot easier, but you know, you live and you learn. All right, leave that to cure. So I ran into a bit of a problem, which I'm sure some of you saw coming. The five minute epoxy is just not holding the flaps in place. The slots aren't deep enough and there's just not enough strength there to really hold them in place. As I press down, you can see it's coming all the way out. If I put a mug in, there is no way that those are gonna hold. I mean, this one, this one's holding a little bit, but I'm sure I can just rip it out with my fingers. I think epoxy doesn't bond super well to TPU and it's just that the orientation of that joint is not very strong. I think that changing the slots so that they didn't go all the way through the cup holder was a bad call. But honestly, this thing is super secure even without the flaps. It's really deep, holds a stainless steel mug with no problem. I mean, like even if I'm going off-roading, this is not going anywhere. So. As much as I would like to refine this design, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is, but if I were to design this again in the future, I would definitely make the slots go all the way through, and I think I would even add a little hook to the end of this TPU so that it's not just a glue connection that's holding it in place, there's actually a mechanical connection there. But for now, I think this is great. Let's go install it in the car. All right, moment of truth, let's see how it fits. Oh, that is perfect. Look at that, it just hugs the curves perfectly. It's like there was meant to be a cup holder there. Plenty of room for the e-brake all the way down. Not a problem, love it. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to secure this in place. So I'm first just gonna give this a good wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to make sure that everything sticks well same thing on here Ooh, it is hot in here it is a hot day in toronto and the windows are closed now because we did these side pieces the double-sided tape isn't going to be taking the full brunt of the support but this will help hold it in place Oh, that's great. So I had to open the door because it's so hot in here, but check this out. Now I've got three 
center cup holders, plus this guy in the back. Cup holders for days. Road trip ready. Ooh, it was hot out there. Had to come inside. If you'd like to directly support this channel, I have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. Every patron at every level gets access to the patrons exclusive Instagram page where I post behind the scenes content. And I would like to give a special shout out to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. If you'd like to learn more about that, head on over to patreon.com slash morleykurt. And 3D printing equals freedom merch, right there, is now available. There'll be a link in the description to that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.